Um, I will call the meeting to order at 8.33 a.m. The certification of open meeting law requirements have been met. The meeting time has been posted. Roll call of committee members. Nutter here. Becker here. Waldera here. Petrick here. And Jean, I know you're there. I can see you. Can you hear us, Jean? No? Yes? Jean? We'll move on. Hopefully she can hear us. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. I so move. Is there a second? second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes of the August 1st meeting? Yes. Are there any corrections, ups, comments, anything? Okay. I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I so move. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We will have three minutes for public comment. If anybody is out there that would like to call in with anything or if there's anybody at the table that has anything to say, the call-in number is 715-538-1894. Any comments around the table? Good morning, Buzz. Good morning. Hey, Buzz. We're having public comment. Do you have anything with the Mississippi River Valley? Any updates, anything going on there that we should know of? Oh, That's okay, you can take a breath. Take a breath. Well, and just in case, just. a big housing study that they, did you check those minutes at all last time? I think that was one of the things. I haven't seen the minutes from yeah, substantial. I'll try and bring that stuff with me from okay. now on. Okay. All right. Jean, is there anything from the Great River Road or tourism? Uh, um, and just so you know, when I was on and then I was talking and there was nobody, so I hung up and um, called back. So I okay, don't know good. if the guys can check on that. And the All other right. thing is I can't um, do the meeting, Zoom, um, on my computer, so that's why I'm calling in. Um Regarding um, the Wisconsin Great River Road, working on um, the visitor guide, and September 19th, there is a soiree, as Todd will call the Chamber of Commerce, the local um, tourism and marketing um, organizations to come to El Maro for a meeting. Um, a lot of people from up the river are coming, so people can kind of... Uh, meet each other, which is nice. And there's a couple things that are in the works and hopefully in the next uh, week or so, I can uh, let everybody know at the next, at the next meeting. And okay. that's where we're at, just firing up for Dry the Great River Road, so. Okay, great, thanks, Jean. Are you still there? Yep, we're here. There's just we're we can, we have about a minute and a half for a call in, oh. so we're just waiting to see oh, if there's a, any other comments. And, and there's, there's, so I don't know if it's my. Never mind. Okay, you're good. We're just being quiet. Can probably hear the clock ticking. Since there are no other calls or comments, I will end the public comment at 8.37 and move on to number seven, discussion possible action on a new meeting time and date. You did a poll and really didn't get uh, overwhelming results. Um, so, you know, in your packet, there's a list of potential times. So it, it seemed like probably the most popular time was the first Thursday at 8.30 a.m., but, you know, 
I don't, I don't know, maybe Dawn has some comments, updates. Yeah, actually, um, so this had come up just because of my struggles with um, my work schedule. Interestingly, after I brought it up, we had a reevaluation of our cadence for our current work project team, and I don't think it's going to impact this meeting the way it has been. So unless anyone else feels strongly about changing it, we probably can just leave it. So I'm sorry that that even happened. That's okay. Is this time good for everybody? You want to just keep it? Let's. It'll work. It'll work. I can make it work better now. Okay. Mm. All right. Then scratch that off. Okay. Done deal. All right. Uh, number eight. Canoe kayak landing at Petrick Park. Grant application. Conservation needs discussion. Possible action. Is that you, Mr. Lowry? Yes. We um, we did put in an application for the conservation aids um, for a kayak landing there at the park and. We are just more or less waiting on results at this point. Um, Is that through DNR? Who's it through? The state? Elk Ground, oh, Elk Ground. Ground. Okay. Are there matching no. funds involved with yes. that? There are. The, this, the, the grant uh, is on the ELU agenda for tomorrow, and, the, and that committee actually does the approving of it. Okay. So... And 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 then then it goes to the DNR. So um, um, from there, so the ELU committee will, is pretty much the decider on this. Is that because it's a conservation grant? It's the type of grant how the grant. Is okay. Set up. All it's, right. That's fine. So not a whole lot of discussion on this particular. About oh, 15 years ago, there was done at the Rod and Gun Club did with conservation aid money, and that one was done on crossroads. That's a nice landing there. What's the source of the conservation aids money? I don't know. It comes to the county, right? Yes. So it's county's discretion. Yeah. Years, years ago, it used to be called Fox Bounty money. And this is just matching funds. Every county in the state gets entitled as conservation and aids money. And basically, the club that's been taking the most advantage of it has been the Rod and Gun Club and Independence for uh, trout stream restoration projects. How much is the grant for? I think is there a limit on how high I it think is? they're right around four thousand dollars matching funds. So the the grant money would be one thousand nine hundred seventy one dollars yeah. is what the max will That's be max, reimbursement. Okay. Right. Yeah. That would be the what we would have to match. So it would be close to that four thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So I understand that ELU needs to be the final sayer on that, but can you explain exactly what? or more, a little bit more detail about what you're looking to accomplish and the cost of that? We're just hoping to put a an upgraded um, landing similar to the one at Crossroads um, down in the lower area of the park. There's, there's a kind of a designated, I wouldn't, wouldn't say designated, but there's an area where historically people have taken canoes and kayaks in and out and it just, it's in need of some, some work just to make it a lot more accessible. Um, so that's, that was kind of the, the thought process behind this grant. So. Yeah, I definitely um, having kayaked. It. That's correct. Yeah, yeah you remember. mentioned that a few couple of meetings ago, but, if I remember right. But I guess I'm just wondering, like, what we it, the the um, resolution notes something about seven thousand dollars. So I guess I just want to understand the funding of how this is going to work. Um. I guess we're going to have to wait and see if we get the grant or not and then see dictate where we're going to take the funds from which line item out of the park's budget. <coughs> um, so obviously we'll we'll match the, right the part and then any part or any additional funding that's needed. We do have park improvements, you know, we have allocated funds within the park's budget to be able to cover the cost of what it will be. So for on the resolution part, it has to give you you have to have a dollar amount in there. So we're estimating that that's what the cost is going to be. Okay, thank you. Is this what you wanted to see? Uh, okay. okay. All right. Are you good, Don? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, I have to go back to the agenda here. 
All right. Um, nine. Recreation pond master. Wait, do you need a motion on the resolution? Yes, please. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I would entertain a resolution to um, approve the grant application for the canoe landing at kayak landing at Petrick Park. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, nine, rec pond master plan update discussion possible action. So a couple of pieces of news here. <clears throat> we did have a preliminary meeting with uh, Roth Professional Services. As uh, you're aware, at uh, the August meeting, we presented the responses to the RFP, and uh, the committee decided to go ahead with Roth for the um, for the design of the rec pond and some of the other implementations. I'm sorry, what? SRF. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, SRF. Yeah, you're right. I had something else on my mind. Anyway, we decided to go with them, and we did have a preliminary meeting, and uh, that's on the rec pan plan design, rec pond design, and implementing some of the other pieces of the Petrick Park Master Plan. Um, so really where that's at right now is the next step is to put together a contract with them we held off on that a little bit because with the changeover with uh, Rick Niemeyer leaving and not doing that work, you know, the uh, legal attorney stuff, um, we wanted to kind of see which way that was going to go. Um, the other piece of news is that we did receive word from the DNR. We did not receive the uh, grant application or receive the grant funding that we applied for for the pond. <clears throat> it was very competitive. Um, they had kind of parceled out this land water conservation fund money to the region so that they each had a pot of money. And I just over the weekend got from our DNR contact the, you know, score sheet and who got awards and stuff like that. And just to give you an idea, um, it looks like West Central Region must have got about a half million dollars to allocate and they allocated 445,000 of that to the village of New Auburn in Chippewa County for their village of New Auburn park development, and then 54 to the village of Fall Creek for some work at Keller Park uh, Playground. So I need to dissect this a little bit more, see how we scored, um, you know, see where we can improve that uh, grant application for the next cycle next year. But that was a piece of news here, so. So anyways, so hopefully you can tweak it a little bit to make it more appealing yeah, to them. You know. Yeah. Well, one of the things that worked against us, and let me see if I've got the email here. Basically, be, because it was a, um, you know, because it was doing, let me see how to she word it here. Uh, the project that the county applied for was eligible only for land water conservation fund funding. Since the statute and code of stewardship program prioritizes rec enhancements of natural waterways and LWCF allows man-made recreational water, uh, water features. So we, because it's a man-made water feature, it narrowed what we were eligible for, which put us at a competitive disadvantage. But it is what it is, yeah. you know. We can't change that part of it. So we'll have to, you know, see if we can you know, improve that application for next year. In the meantime, I just wanted to, you know, throw that out there, make sure that the committee was still on board with moving forward with that contract that got approved last last month. And, you know, if so, then we'll go forward and get that drawn up by Corp Council. There is an way to tie it in. For handicap handicap accessibility because usually anytime you mention handicap accessibility it's kind of at the top of the list especially since there is a waterway called the Trumpel River that goes through it but I mean that isn't there's no way possible that it's going to be handicap accessible well the rec yeah I, I, I don't I, I would think actually if we're building the rec pond, we probably would have to figure out a way to make it handicapped accessible. I don't think you can build something like that these days and not make it handicapped accessible. Unless I'm missing something. No, I think ADA has to be involved in any new project. But I think, are you suggesting though that maybe there's other grants related right. that we could look into from that angle? Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll continue to look for grant funding for this project, no question. Um, and this was the first time the county had applied for LWCF funding in at least five or six years. Right. Or if there's something in the Knowles uh, stewardship program. That's what this one was under. Front of Knowles? Yeah. Well, we still have time, and I don't want to give up on this possibility. So, right. so I guess the question on the table, though, is do we want to continue with the um, contract with SNF? I forget now. Is that right? SRF. SRF. Uh, I can't remember what that dollar amount was, but we do have the money. Mm -hmm. um, we were hopeful for the grant, but we have the money mm -hmm. that we can spend to get the plan developed. Right. But then once we get the plan developed, will we have money to spend to do the work? And remember, uh, you know, this really, this contract is really to implement the park master plan. It's not just the pond. And if we think about it that as you know, we do do these projects in stages and phases, and so this moves us along forward to imp implementing the entire plan. And again, we have to develop uh, that five-acre parcel to retain ownership of it that, because it was donated. So if we pursue with the contract, that allows us to, to, to find a place in the home for that playground, because that was part of the, the site planning exercise. And uh, so that would essentially kind of this is it continues to go forward so we we benefit from it even if we don't do the rec bond EV yeah I'm 100% in favor of continuing I just want to be sure that we're right all on the same page and that we understand the impacts yeah it's the whole thing not just one right part which, which is really why I was wanting to go with them in the first place but right. yeah so yeah I think we still move forward right I can't imagine we would go backwards I don't want to go backwards. Did, did we make a, and I'm sorry, I apologize, I missed one of the meetings. With this company though, is there gonna be, they're just drawing up a plan? Or is there an alternative? One for the pond, maybe maybe one not for the pond? You know, where maybe we were talking before, another shelter with some playground equipment or, or something different? Yeah, the proposal that they, the proposal, proposal they submitted and the one we discussed and approved last month was to, Designed the pond, but then there were other some some other components of the, the master plan, like Mike had mentioned, that were included. So, and I'm not saying we should do this or shouldn't do this. I'm just throwing it out there. So, if if the, if the decision was, you know what, we're not we're no longer interested in building a rec pond. We would like to look at something else for that land. Then I think we would we need to go back and look at you know that proposal and renegotiate something else or, or whatever you know to include I think, that I think though that the scope of the proposal would change but we would continue to work with them through potentially yeah. some other opportunities yeah, I would so, think so. Yeah. right well, that's got to just have, be a little have options that's what I was looking for Mike I no yeah so I mean you know that would be important you know if, if, if you if you for instance today said you know we don't want to pursue that rec pond thing let's have them look at something else to develop on that site then we'd have to discuss that with them and, and change that we, have, we don't have a contract on anything yet and there are a lot of options within the master plan of things that, right that we had hoped and wanted to do at the park enhancements so I think just because we didn't weren't successful on the first grant. That's no reason to back away no. from this water oh, feature in I'm the park. I'm not saying that. So I, just, I think I was it's just very asking. important that we continue down this road with this consultant to get something. Then we, once we got more of a design and a plan, then we got something to sell to people. Right now, we have nothing to sell to people except right. to own the ground. Right. And the big picture, you know, of what we wanted to do, which. I mean, I was very impressed when we put forth this master plan, how many people actually were involved in wanting to see it. And you you presented it at three different venues, I think, and there were always a lot of people. So there's an interest in um, park enhancement. So, and I've already kind of told the um, exec finance committee they need to leave the park alone and just find their extra money someplace else. And remember this proposal, the proposal <coughs> we sent forward also included some preliminary um, work on determining the location of the bridge 
uh, to, so we can access the 30 acres across the way. Right. That wherever that location can impact where you put other things in the park. So it's all connected and it's really hard to just kind of do one piece. That's why the, that proposal was written up that way to have a, a more comprehensive approach to things. So it's re a really forward looking way to approach things is to continue with the, uh, with the contract and the proposal. I agree. I mean, we've already voted to go with this company. I, I don't feel we need to have another yeah, the reason this, the reason this was on the agenda was just to update you right. on the, the status of the grant right. in case that would make any dif difference in terms of changing direction or whatever. And what I'm hearing is that there was no desire to change direction. Oh, and backwards. the committee action last month would just go forward. Right. right. Yep. Okay. Please, let's just go forward. Yep. All right. Okay, great. Um, 10, UTV, ATV discussion. So this was put on the agenda, I think, was it at yeah, your request, Dawn? <laughs> That's always an easy guess. That's Dawn. And I, I honestly didn't really remember other than can we talk about it. Um, what, what I will say is, so ATV, UTV, you know, we've, in, in terms of, you know, parks, tourism, economic development, we've looked at this previously. Um, you know, I, won't, I know my predecessor worked with the previous highway commissioner, you know, on the, you know, getting the county roads open for ATVs and, you know, a number of the townships and stuff have followed suit. Um, but I think what you were really sort of angling for is, you know, is there something we can do to develop, further develop an ATV, UTV system? Yeah, I guess I'm just, um, I'm interested in that for a couple of reasons. One, because it's um, very, very popular mm -hmm. currently. And so it is a very big tourism attractant. Correct. And therefore a great financial benefit too for the yeah. county, right? Mm -hmm. But we also have really great land in Tremplo County that would make the UTV experience quite awesome if we were able to pursue some of that. And you think about all of the people in our area that head out typically to the north, right. to go UTVing and what that does for them um, from an economic standpoint is tremendous. I don't know the numbers, but I've seen it because I go. I go UTVing. So um, I do know that it is a very big and lucrative thing. So I don't know what that would entail to develop something like that in Trumpelo County and or how they did it, how that's been pursued in other areas where they do have extensive. I, I think the difference is they have state land and a lot of forest and things. Correct. So we don't have that opportunity as much here. <clears throat> but is there anything that we could do, um, it, maybe even on a smaller level? Yeah, and we 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 had some internal discussion <laughs> about that, and you know I think the model would be kind of the model that that is there for you know the snowmobile trails and. And stuff like that, but the problem is, I I just think it's a non-starter that you know it, it it would be impractical and a non-starter to, for instance, use snowmobile trails for ATVs. Just far, I, I think the landowners we have aren't going to go for that, um, and it's just not practical. Because a lot of those go through farm fields, you know, where during the winter that's not a problem. Um, but it is something we certainly could you know look into and say you know if we were going to just start with a small trail where would it be and then look to see if we can build on that and you know it would be wonderful if we could do something like that for instance you know branching out from Petrick Park because yes. we've already got the parking there and the facility and you know we want to encourage more usage of it precisely and then I mean there are a lot of sportsman's clubs I don't know whether or not there would be any interest in any of their properties and I don't yeah. mean just El, the Elk Creek one I, I, I don't know what the opportunities are but I think they're worth exploring right so one one thing I am thinking about doing, um, and I'm pretty serious I'm really going to do it, is starting this winter have a series of, um, you know, monthly economic development sort of community roundtables where we come in and talk about different things. And one of them is going to be tourism slash outdoor recreation. And I think that would be an opportunity, you know, to maybe just see what the pulse is of, you know, stakeholders in that area, um, you know, in that field of economic development and see what we can get started. But I, I do know, I mean, I, I get calls, 
and emails from people and they're asking about, you know, ATV, UTV in Trempolo County. And I, I do mention, you know, that the county roads and a lot of the town roads are open, but mm -hmm. that's just not the kind of experience that you're right, looking for. Right. Um, Jackson County, right, you know, our neighbor to the east there, they've got quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And even if we were looking at, you know, developing something that would potentially like tap in to their system, like start something up, you know, around Osseo and then build out from that, that would be a logical thing rather than starting like in Trempolo and then it doesn't connect to anything. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely on the radar screen. I've got a folder on ATV, UTV stuff. Um, I've run into these guys, you know, Wisconsin ATV, UTV Association at tourism conferences. So we've got plenty of resources. I, you know, if, if there's a feeling, you know, consensus of the committee that we want to start exploring that, I think it's going to take time to build. Do we even have a map of what roads are open and then what amenities are along those roads? Uh, that seems to me that would be something to have up on the website. Yeah. It's all county roads, right? It's all Letter roads. What? Letter roads, yes. Yeah, yeah all county all roads. County, right, because my road, which is Unity, does not, has not historically wanted, the township has not wanted ATV U2E well, on there. We don't have any county unity. But my, Mo Valley, my road has become a bypass road from D to H to get to the big, you know, trail up in Strum, where they worked really hard on that doing some repair last weekend because some ATVers did a bunch of damage to the trail right after new gravel and everything had oh, been done. Bad. So that's the thing that irritates right. people, um, you know, just not being respectful of your own trail that a lot of time and effort went in. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, doing circles and whatever and going off and doing damage on the side of the, you know, so it just so they, wasn't good. They are allowed on the county roads, not allowed on any numbered highways. And that state makes highways. it difficult because they don't connect. Correct. Right. There's very few connections. And then and then some, some town roads. And if you go on like the, you know, if you go on mapping or if you go through our, our tourism website and go out to ATV, UTV, uh, it does connect back up to something land management's put together, and you so you can see where the trails are. You can, yeah, but there is no like you know printed map of stuff like because you know that could I just change. Just want to make it easy for folks. Yeah, yeah here's where we can stay. Here's where we can ride. Yeah, we don't have you know thirty thousand acres county forest. Right. No, it's not like forest. Douglas County here where well, it's very it's big just, up there. But what we do have is an incredibly scenic landscape. Right. But we do have a lot of access, Right. So let's there, and, try and make it easy for folks. And somehow we have to help people understand that it's not a bad thing. Because I know, I think you were on the committee when we went and visit, looked at a possibility someone was going to give us land in Chimney Rock area. And... There was a outrage that we would even consider having primitive camping or using it for ATV. You know, the people in the township got signatures, and we hadn't even decided to do anything. We were just, it was possible someone was going to. So I think there's got to be a lot of public relations going on that not all ATV, UTV users are going to trash your land and throw garbage. That was the thing. We don't want to pick up garbage after them, blah, blah, blah. So, and I know in Douglas County, because it's so prevalent there, people are very respectful and I, they're all around my little cabin and I never, I don't have one single complaint about any of it. One of the comments we'll probably see is this fall. Not everybody's into going trail riding. You right. know, we've got most of the comments that I hear from my place of business with tourists coming through, boy, you sure have it pretty here. He says, we can go any place and go through a forest, but you can't go through the rolling hills and see the scenery and the views. And I think this is probably going to be about the first fall that everything has been opened up that you might see a lot of people like in Square Bluff and say Montana Ridge and Silver Fox Ridge, just to name a few around here, that they can go for a ride down these roads and just look at the colors. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. You know, like a fall color ride. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Well, and Yeah, and like Olin Femrites coach rides that used to happen in the fall went through, you know, they were very popular. Yeah, I'm not, and you know, I'm I'm not poo-pooing, you know, the town road, county road thing. It's just, it, I, I I think 
you know, I mean, a lot of people have side by sides AED TVs, TVs, and, and you know, you, you go a little slower on that than you would in a car, and so you're going to have the experience better than you would if you were driving through with a car and stuff. So I, I think it's something that we can promote. You know, it's like bring your ATV, UTV up here. You know, we have these, you know, low volume county roads and town roads that are open ATVs and, and view our wonderful scenery. But for that off-roading, you know, getting muddy and dirty experience, we don't have. We don't have that currently. And that's. that's. But it's something to build towards. But we could still put out there that, hey, the county roads are now yes. open. And is there anything that, I don't know, I am just asking, is there anything that we can do that would help uh, connect the county roads? Like, could we look at the county roads and say, hey, there's no way to get from this county road to this county road to get anywhere, yeah. and then be an advocate for making um, waivers or exceptions for a certain, like, I know those happen, I just don't know how those happen. Sure. I think the previous uh, county highway commissioner did put some sort of mapping when this all came to be last a couple years ago at, on the county highway website. I think there, because we talked about when your predecessor was here, linking that to our website. Well, that's the that's the mapping I was talking okay. about that Land and it, Records did. And it does yeah. show some connections, but there's... There I, I got a whole file on what Al Rinka right, and I, Rob Grover were working on. I guess so. what I've heard from people in the area, it's not that I've done a ton of riding in Trempolo County, but I guess what I have heard is just that, yes, I can go on County D, but now I can't get to... And that's just an example. I have no idea. But, like, I can't get anywhere from there because there's no connecting point from D to yeah. C or whatever it is. And that's and, why they end up sometimes on township roads to get from D to H. But are the township roads, are they open everywhere? Modern, I don't think no, they are. No, not, not everywhere. It's it more more prevalent in the southern part of the county, less prevalent in the north. And I guess that's what I'm saying. Could we could we help advocate for those connections with the townships? Um, well, that was certainly the direction that Al and Rob were going when they were working on it. And, you know, I, I think there's a reason you know, I, 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 whatever the, I think there's a reason that some of the townships are resistant to it. And like Jeannie, I think, you know, on some of it. Um, and I don't know if it's our place to, I guess you see with, with the ATV UTV thing, the way, especially because I think the end, end game is development of some kind of a trail system. I, I think there's got to be some grassroots support among, you know, ATV enthusiasts and users landowners, um, that kind of thing, to develop a system. And then I think we can give that a push. Um, but the question is, how do you facilitate that in the first place to start that conversation? And I'm more than willing. I think it's a, it's a good you know, use of my time and part of my job to, is to help facilitate that kind of thing. So I think a good, a good next step would be to try to you know, identify who some of those stakeholders There is be. a UTV... Um group in the area i don't yeah, they came to a public hearing and were very um well spoken right when you go to the highway department's website the very big letter is this it's got road construction map atv utv maps like right okay pops up immediately so you don't even have to search for it it's right there okay well i shame on me i didn't realize that existed okay. right under the road construction map okay is that linked to our tourism I don't know. So I look. Are you looking at the highway? Yeah, I'm looking at the county yeah, highway. Yeah, just make sure we get a link on that. Or, and, I, and I think we should get a hold of the cities. I don't, I don't know, Dave, you probably have. And found out where the cities have their ATV trails so that all the people can get around town, get to the city station, I'm not. gas, get to the root beer stand or uh, the restaurant to eat. And I, I don't know if every city allows them. I know we have, and we've got a, a, a regular route through town so they can go yeah and i know a couple other cities that have it so i mean i think that'd be a nice like buzz was saying if we give them maps they know where they're going and they can I'm get not, places there i'm not some... logged into the zoom meeting but you know on our tourism web homepage, right there's a link for atv trails and it goes right out to that the map could land be, records mapping it could be better i'm having a hard time understanding Oh. Well, that's good. I mean, that's a good start. I mean, yeah, it's a start. To get them. And we've had, I will say, it's been about a year now, has it been, since we had, we approved it, or when Al at the Highway Committee. Yeah, maybe almost close to, to some seizure. And uh, 
in the city of Independence, I can only speak for them, we've had not good, not, you know, one, no big significant complaints or nobody abusing it. They, they seem to respect what Pretty you want. Well Very well behaved. Mm -hmm. you no, know, yeah, not even... just throttling it down the street. So, I mean, the four-wheeler people have done a good job of just doing a nice job of keeping it uh, not, not reckless, but just an enjoyable right. ride. Even even though my road is not a approved road, people drive very slowly. They're always waving at me, you know. But don't call them. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're negative in that, but they don't have any problem when they get a half a percent sales tax uh, check at the end of the year. You know what's brought into the local economy. Somebody has to. You have to buy your gas somewhere. Well, I mean, just to stop for a sandwich. Mm -hmm. yep. So well, that's, that's the point. When I brought it up before, can we begin to access some of that generated by tourism to go back into these types of activities? Is that something the county board would entertain that discussion? Dave, you need to log out. No, I just muted my oh, mic. Oh, okay. Well, Thank you. Yeah, well, you were. We get a half a percent sales tax on everything in the county, and Dave has told us estimated the amount of those tourism dollars. So I, granted, some of that should go to roads because we bring these people in, but shouldn't some of that be available then to use for the various activities that we are discussing as part of this committee? Maybe spark towards the park development or enhancement or whatever. But could we get an earmark, so to speak, in the county budget that X percent of the money generated there, even if it's 25, 30 grand to start, that's real money to start doing something. So I did, I did present at county board in August and just on visitor spending and how much that generates for taxes. And it was, it's like, if you go back and look at the half percent sales tax on you know what's documented in terms of visit direct visitor spending by the state it's like two hundred fifty thousand dollars <throat> and so i was laying the groundwork for that buzz um you know told them that we you know are looking you know to go up from 14 to twenty thousand this year for tourism marketing in our budget um but i think yeah that's definitely some groundwork that's being laid that i think is appropriate and if we start if we have some projects going forward that we want to do, you know, whether it's ATV, UTV, trail development, or something like that, I th I think now they're more educated on that. Well, if you ask for a third of it, that's eighty grand, right? Basically. Yeah. So uh, that's. Got to realize you just can't take all the time. Sometimes you got to give. Right. Well, I think it's it's true enough that you have to invest in order to see continued right. growth. Right. Um. But I think there's a lot of competing factors that play into that, which mm -hmm. I also understand. Um, <clears throat> but is there, yeah, I agree that there maybe is something that could be said for half a percent of, of something or, you know, what have you, to be able to reinvest to then grow that pot for continued. Because mm -hmm. um, the idea is if we develop more tourism assets in the county right. <clears throat> and we can draw more visitors than those numbers, you know, in terms of the, the half percent sales tax impact are going to go up. And, you know, even, yeah, even if the county continues to take some of that money for general, you know, purposes, if we're reinvesting some of that money back into tourism and growing, you know, our, our infrastructure, I mean, there's some other limiting yeah. factors. Like, you know, we don't have enough hotel space in the county, you know, especially like in the summer, you know, a lot of hotels are booked up and stuff like that, you know, so it'd be nice to have more hotels. But, but the more demand we have, the more the hotels will come. Right. You build right. it, they'll it's, come. Yeah. <laughs> but would we be better having a specific ask to the full county board? Just let's throw out that 33% per year, and it is in that 80,000 range. All of a sudden, in five years, we got four hundred thousand of match to go forward with the park update, which takes us a long way down the road in a relatively short period of time when you put things on the grand scheme of things. I, I think that's an excellent strategy for next year's budget, probably. Well, I think you planted the seed in the brains of right. the county board at the meeting. You know, it was eye-opening for some on how, 
you know, because I think there is kind of this element out there that tourism doesn't really generate much in Trumplow County. And you have to keep reminding people, yes, it does. Yes, it does. You know, and I th especially in the north, people don't always know what's going on, you know, with the vineyards and the apple orchards and all the things happening. And Galesville, I just learned myself, 32 businesses are run by women in Galesville. You know, I mean, that's was remarkable to me. I mean, there's a lot happening in this county. We just need to, like, brag about it. Yeah. Okay, so I think this has been really done an ongoing discussion for, like, five years. How can we enhance or bring back or even create UTV, ATV, which is how the highway department got involved in that. All The roads all opened up a couple years ago. Yeah, and, and that's great progress, and I and know was there was a start. lot of, and there was a lot of, I understand, debate with all of that, but um, one of the, so I'm looking, I'm perusing this map, and um, there are a lot of roads open, but the connection is what's difficult. Does anyone know, and I have to ask, and it's probably a stupid question, but I'm going to ask it anyways, because that's what I do. Um, can, is there any way... Or I guess I have seen where state highways have had UTV trails along the sides of them in, like, the ditch, I guess, if you will. But I don't know, like, what, how that happens or... You'd have to have a hazmat suit to ride in the ditches of Trump Low County <laughs> when, when um, wild parsnip is up. Which just covers the ditches. Well, gets you on would your face, create, get in the sun. You're full of blisters. But you would create the trail system, right? right? So then you wouldn't have. That. Yeah, I, I, I think I know what you're talking. I mean, I it's, in that. some in some locations, as part of, you know, road development or road rehabilitation, you know, DOT, DOT will add, you know, recreational trails on right of way where they have it. Um, so again, you know, as part of a, a broadly developed plan. You know, for ATV, UTV, or bikes and whatever, you know, we certainly could, you know, start working with DNR to make sure those were included, you know, going forward. Um, the problem with, you know, the, the problem with the topography and, and the terrain around here is that there's not a lot of right away sometimes, especially when you're, you know, in hilly areas and stuff to do that. I guess what I'm thinking is, is like some of the major highways, right. you know, and I, I don't I don't know what the opportunities are or aren't. I just know what I've seen. And yeah. when I look at this map, yes, there are a lot of township roads I can oh. ride on, but I got to ride on that road, load it up on my trailer to go down the street to the next road oh. because the only thing that connects the two are a highway and there's no no way to use that. Yeah. Well, and that may be the that may be the place where, you know, you develop a short trail to connect, you know, some other locations. So that, that's just something that, that we're going to need to spend some time and look at. But I would love nothing better than for us to have, you know, something that ATVers would want to come to Trumplow County for, you know, for that off-road experience. In the meantime, you know, we have to sell what we've got, and that oh, is, right, right. you know, bring them and, you know, go slow and, and just soak in some of the scenery. And it's, it's an appropriate time to do that right now because, you know, fall is probably one of the best times to come and truly appreciate that. And, you know, I will, we have River Travel Media working with us um, a little extra this, this fall uh, to do a part of our fall campaign. And when I get back upstairs after the meeting, I'm going to, you know, put the bug in there and we're going to get something out there on ATV, UTV. Instead of running away from it, let's lean into it. Right. And, Say what we've got. And you correct me if <coughs> correct me if I'm wrong, Dave. But you can travel on state highway if, if it's under 35 miles an hour, and it's if it's yes, if it's approved by the city as a designated. Oh route. yeah, we, we're, yeah, where it's a in the cities like that. In the cities, yeah, like, but yeah, not, I'm trying to think what the not name anything is. Anything over 35 miles an hour is no, yeah. you can't. It has to be 30. Even in the city, it has to be under 35. It can't be 45. It's got to be 35 or under. Then the city can designate it as a ATV route, and that is the yeah. I, I think you're I think you're correct on that, yeah. Adi. One, one more question, following up on the maps a bit. <clears throat> Are designated parking spots for loading and unloading where people can safely park and access those areas? Is that an option to add any of that to the maps? If we can identify where those are, I mean, off the top of my my head, Petrick Park would be would certainly be one, right. but. 
the problem is like if you go to Petrick Park you're yeah where do you go from there <laughs> nowhere because you can't go you can't take the ATVs out on Highway 93. Mm -mm. Adi what about in the city of Independence Did, where do these or uh, I mean Well, I know the golf course. I know the golf course up there. Um, is that Viking? Yep. Yeah. You know they they to, they told me last year. Hey, you know we're totally cool with people parking their snowmobile trailers here and and unloading and offloading to you know to access the trails. It's yeah, a busy trail for ATVs in the summer. Right. I know for snowmobiling in Independence, there's a lot of people I'll send up like where the boat works is yeah. because the trail goes north and south right there and then they can park there. It's a street in Independence that hardly anybody uses. Yeah, and, yeah, and that way they can park their truck and trailer right there and they can go either direction on the snowmobile trail. Well, this is a good discussion and we'll keep having it. I don't think we need any possible action or just continue the discussion on how we can develop these trails and have everybody be happy. And I think it's going to involve some, you know, conversations with town townships, town boards to, you know, say this isn't really going to be a bad thing. You know, people have so far been respectful. Um, we'll move on to number 11, review financial status of donations, discussion, possible action. And you'll be happy to, I think I emailed you about this, that I had a discussion with Paul, I think it was, with Paul? I don't know. Yeah, it's, this whole week has me all screwed up. But um, there, the policy that we have looked at, which says you can only give $1,000 without approval of the county board and you can't specify things, was written up but was never sent to the county board for approval or vote. So um, people can give as much as they want and designate, you know, because I, I think it was Paul, because he pulled out the Paul and John Austin, this was like last month. Right after our meeting, I think I went up and talked to, because I emailed, I could go back and look at the email, but. Um, so we, uh, people can donate to their heart's content and specify where they want it to go. Are there any questions about that? No, nope, I was not under about the that. impression that that policy had been approved and, and it had not. It was just something written up by Exact Finance but never went to the full county board. So I, I also spoke to Paul and that, that is correct. That it, their policy is not in effect. Yeah, so. Anybody out there, give as much as you can and want to a specific cause and don't worry about it. So looking at this donation document, were we going to be reviewing it in any great detail or was this just informational? And the one thing I highlight I wanted to uh, let everyone know that um, in our reserve fund, uh, the balance of the or the donation amount that's left in there, that's that's sitting in the reserve fund. So whenever we look at our reserve balance, you got to remember that there's con yeah, there's conditions on these donations and that's part of that money. Um, and I don't think necessarily other committees understand that as well. So just bringing that to your attention and um, uh, that's just, uh, you know, we, we have a um, couple donations out there and we're utilizing them, working on the furnace and things like that. So. And I, I think you talked to our board chair, as did I this morning, that that money can't be tapped into use for whatever the county needs money for, for that very reason, because we have a lot of donations sitting in our. So you're talking about the reserve fund? Yeah. Can't be tapped in? Right. Yeah. That was set up by the county board in the early 70s. Right as a rainy day fund that in case there's something there, it could never be tapped into it. Right. The park is one of the, the few in the county that they, they cannot touch. 
I had to remind them of that today. Just just the reserve fund, though. They can always, like, Cut. Prog- program cuts and things, right? right? Like, But I just really stress, you've got to leave our park alone. <laughs> yeah, I don't disagree. I'm just saying. Like, yeah. We're so, not untouchable. <laughs> we're not. But we're just a small little business, and we want to keep us growing and going. So go somewhere else for your money. So I was reading that. What is a rain garden? Oh, it's right out in front of the, um, I, we all helped build that. Um, it's right out, there's two of them at the park. A rain garden captures the water that hits impervious surfaces and directs it all into one place. So like, there's, like Jeannie was just saying, there's- We're having a drought though, so- gray water you're talking about. Yeah, gray water. Yeah, and so it's, it, um, we have two of them, one in front of the, cloth shelter and one kind of off to the side so everything that hits that roof surface goes into a underground um, or down the the gutters and then underground and then feeds that those gardens so oh. they, they're ten, generally more water loving species because they you and, and a rain event happens they'll get all that water off of the roof sure as well, so. okay and like i'm envisioning rainforest oh, kinds okay. of things <laughs> i'm like if we had a rainforest here i, I don't think that'll that. work sure you okay. see you see them you know fairly often in you know more urban settings you know, to capture the rainwater and whatnot. So it's really it's gotten very pretty. It's we did it about three years ago. Twenty nineteen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Before you, the pandemic. Yes. Do you think with the drought that we have, we might have to repurpose or redo some of those plants? No, they should be good. They look good. They look really well because the um, the two park caretakers have been watering them oh. consistently all summer. Thank you. <laughs> So they're not starving for rain like the prairie is up by the horse arena. So, on um, that beautiful prairie that was on D, I drove by it today next to that house. Mm-hmm. The drought has been very bad for that. Mm-hmm. So, they're drought resistant though. They'll, they'll I know back. they'll be back next year. Any other questions on donations? Okay, um, twelve park. This is you. Sure, I'll give some updates on some of the what's been going on. Ashley for the Arts went very smooth. Um, yep, no issues there, which is always nice. Um, people are looking forward to next year. Um, I've, you know, with some of the transition going on with moving the, the park responsibilities to Dave. In the meantime, I've been working with him quite a bit on pretty much all aspects of the position: snowmobile, uh, parks, you know, Ashley for the Arts specifically as well. Um, and working on some SOPs and going to be finishing them up this week um, so that, you know, Dave and Mike and whoever fills positions going forward, uh, you know, can review those and see kind of what needs to be done. Could you um, say what an SOP is for people? Standard who are... operating procedure. Thank you. And then, you know, Mike has held, set up some meetings for us to discuss as staff, you know, going forward, you know, all, with all the transition and everything between with the reorg and everything as well as me leaving. Um, you put that in really quietly. Yeah, you did. You with, did. Tell us more leaving. about that. <laughs> no. But, well, anyways, Mike has set up, you know, like on the conservation side of things, how we're going to be proceeding and as well as the parks and snowmobile um, work. So um, in addition to that, the three projects that are going on right now, we have the highway department coming in this week. Well, at least I was told this week to remove the old asphalt that's leading up to the class shelter and then next week they're going to be putting in the new blacktop there nice. so that'll okay. be really nice um you guys could review the a couple of pted meetings ago with that presentation i gave um also i've been working with um somebody that wants to you know the maliszewski family that wants to donate some money for the heat in the class shelter um so i've been kind of filling dave in on that and fans. yep fans and heating and and we're waiting on some um uh, quotes right now from the electrical companies to have that installed. So that's one project, or not, I should say another one. And then we have the snowmobile bridge going over Whit Hill Road, or not over the road, but near Whit Hill Road, anticipated coming in next week, pending DNR permit is approved. Oh, cool. So Army Corps reached out that they don't see any issues with it. So I'm, I'd really like to maybe call the DNR a few more times this week and see if I can, I don't know if it'd be effective or not to move that process through, but. Because there is a September 15th deadline when you're dealing with trout waters or any waters that feed trout mm-hmm. streams. So at worst case, we have to, you know, apply for a, an extension on it if it doesn't happen. So I'm going to be working with Dave and filling him in on all that, too, as well. Also, when I was talking to Paul and John 
after our last meeting, um, John was going to go to the highway department to talk about plowing the driveway into the park in the winter so it's accessible for winter activities. Sure. He said there should be no problem with them doing it. Okay, good deal. He said they drive down 93, just zip in and plow in, plow out, and continue up 93. Perfect. That's we'll want to get, exactly. We'll want to get a bit of right, area, right. But he said that should not be an issue at all. I need to remind him, make sure he talk to the highway department. But that he wrote it down, so. Reed, did you ever get those tables? The ones from the independent school district? No, the ones you were ordering. Nope, they were on back order still. However, we did receive some from, I want, it was at the elementary school in Independence. They were only like used for one year and they were given to us free. So they're in there now. Um, they're awesome. You know, you can fold them up, wheel them around and open them back up. But oh, wow. those tables and chairs are still on back order. I'm waiting to hear from Paul. And how about the heater and the cloth shelter? That is, um, we're in the works right now. What do you mean we're in the works? We had it bid out. Yeah. Oh, well, we're waiting. We're not going with the previous bid, so we are looking into other options with electrical heat, and then that was some of that donation money that Rick was going to be um, donating to us. So, I'm hoping. Uh, yeah, I thought we approved that all last fall. We didn't put it in last fall because we thought we'd wait till spring, and in the spring you were going to put get it in as soon as you could. Right. And what what ha why did it fall apart? Remember, remember the uh, the contractor would not respond to our calls; it would right. not show up. Right. It's, so, did you so. talk to him in person? No, he didn't. Probably, we didn't return calls. Probably left half a dozen voicemails, or not probably half a dozen. Probably three or four, and there was just no response back. So I just assumed that there was no. They didn't want to re proceed with the project. Well, why did we switch to electric heat though? Well, we're just we're looking into some options right now because I was approached by the Malcheski family to give a donation for some electric heating in there in fans. Reed and I'll talk about this this week. We don't have anything for approval or anything. I'm just well, saying the status of the heat. It's well, just information for our for yeah, our, for right. us so that we know when somebody yeah. asks a question. We'll, we'll, we'll get you a full sure status enough. report. Yeah. I'd like, hopefully, yeah. hopefully we can just get the work done before your October meeting, and we'll be all good. That's and I, we what talked about this at our last meeting that I, I will not say his name, but he has just not. So right, we, it was supposed to be installed. We suggested in October that you of last look year. at other right. options since he was mm -hmm. not following through. Right. Because he was going to come in the spring because he was too busy in the fall and the spring right. has come and gone. Mm -hmm. We were, so, uh, this is Doreen Olson speaking for the Malaszewski family. Uh, we were looking into <coughs> donating fans and then there was some discussion that maybe with donating the fans and the electrical work for infrared heating that's similar to um, a private uh, place in independence that has infrared that that might be a better way to go and put the infrared so it comes down um, but again we're working we were working with Reed which is transferring to Dave and um, a bid out to um, a company in Arcadia electrical company in Arcadia but that was per that I discussion. I wasn't at the last meeting, but it was it already discussed. Meeting, yeah. Well, it was discussed the meeting before. It might have been that discussed the, in July. Yeah, because the contractor wasn't getting back right. in regards to that. So, and I know there's huge backlogs. It took us a year to get somebody mm -hmm. to come and roof our cabin. So, but a phone call back would have been nice. Right, we wouldn't be changing course if we just even right. if they said there is going to be a six month delay or something that's right. no problem but right. the fact that we haven't heard anything eight nine months no yeah. Miss Terry I had a question since we're talking about the sent the class building didn't they rewire that whole thing a couple of years ago or didn't uh... I don't think so not to my knowledge maybe I started in 19. There hasn't been any wiring work down there. There was uh, some some cameras put in. Yeah, I just but I just was out there for a party, and they kept. I thought those outlets were all separate, and they were mm -hmm. popping breakers. So. They did some upgrading when they uh, you know, put that extra shelter on. You know, I think on that side of the yeah. kitchen, but in the kitchen, I don't but think they, they did. They did some upgrading because it doesn't yeah. use it like it used to. <laughs> well, we, they were blowing them for door jeans. They were really blowing them. And I just, I, I couldn't remember if somebody said, well, I thought they upgraded, I said, I don't know. But uh, just something to keep in our mind sure. down the road, maybe to upgrade electrical if it, if it ever comes. I mean, we had a lot of stuff comes up. at the 100 
or the 50th, we had a lot of electric things going that day and we had no problems with the electricity. That was just last fall. Right. Last so September. maybe just that, the kitchen area, maybe it's more? It's the kitchen yeah. area, I think, yeah. yeah. They were plugging sure. in and those roasters, they draw a lot. Yeah, they I mean, do. We, when we did the Park of the Independence, we redid every outlet was on its own breaker. Others, they, you can't. So I was just wondering, I couldn't remember. Thank you. I do not, this is Doreen again, I do not know anything about electricity, but according to my brother, he went and looked at the breaker system, and he says for the infrared heat, there was going to have to be an additional something oh, sure. added, but there's enough electricity there Coming to there. be yes. able to pull whatever is needed for that. He's threw out numbers. I don't know. <laughs> Anything else, Mr. Lally? Nope, that should be it. Okay. Reed, I think there was a question about where you're going. No, so I'd like I'll to, I'd like to have some detail. I don't um, want to talk about it because I'll start crying. I'm going to make a motion to not approve <laughs> your leaving. <Sure. laughs> I'll Sounds second good. that. Oh, yeah. It's unanimous. <laughs> Are you are you willing to offer any details or offline? I can. I accept the position at, at NRCS, so I'll still be right here in Whitehall, just down the road. What does NRCS do? Um, well, it was actually, it wasn't called NRCS when it was um, established or made. It was it was it was a post depression era or uh, dust bowl thing for soil conservation. So it's kind of materialized, you know, through under USDA. Um, He's going to work for the feds. Huh. So yeah, so I'll be just just down the road. Land yep, I'll still be working with the county on on various things and whatnot. So hmm. yeah. Well, I expect priority treatment. Sure. So do okay. I. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Give me a call. Good. Good luck to you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. We will miss you. When is your last day? October. Friday this week. Friday. What? He's been he's been dropping stuff on my desk like for the last two weeks, saying you'll need this, Dave. You'll need that. <laughs> and we're having a later trader going away party for him on Friday. That was Amy's idea. Oh, what time? Noon. Noon. Okay. Am I invited? Sure. I didn't set up the meeting, so I assume so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hart, are you done with your report? I will miss I'm finished, you. yes. You have done a fabulous job well, thank being you. here. And I totally, I can probably speak for the whole committee. You have just been an outstanding addition to the Department of Land Management and to our park. And a lot of what has happened in the last couple of years with the park would not have happened without you. So. Oh, thank you, Jeannie. Appreciate that. They're lucky to have you. The federal government. Damn them. Okay, this is, here is Mr. Carlson, Economic Development Tourism Manager Report. All right, um, a few things I wanna highlight. So tomorrow I'll be up in Rice Lake, uh, tomorrow Thursday actually, the uh, University of Wisconsin Extension's putting on a seminar on BEAD, that's the Broadband ec uh, Equity and Access um, Grant Funding, Planning and partner Partnering, so how we can partner with different groups and stuff on that. Um, so I think that's gonna be informative. Um, we're working on, or actually just completed, let me get my zoom back up here. Oh, shoot. Oh, there we go. Get out of the, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Share my screen. So I think I mentioned before that we were working with um, River Travel Media out of La Crosse, you know, on doing an extension of fall campaign. And this is separate from what we're doing with River Travel. River Travel Media is doing some social media on Facebook and some other digital advertising and stuff. But we're also putting together a fall ad. This is what it's going to look like, and it's going to be running in the on Wisconsin Outdoors, that's the free newspaper that's at all the quick trips in the state of Wisconsin. It's distributed in a lot of weekly newspapers down in the northwest Chicago suburbs. It's got a total distribution of north of 100,000. So it's really some good reach. And this was the ad that we put together 
specifically promoting, you know, fall in Tremplow County. And, you know, the drives, the apple orchards, hiking, kayaking, you know, the wineries, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and you'll see on the bottom we called out, you know, some special fall camping rates at Petrick Park. So anybody that sees this and uses the uh, promo code FALL23, um, you know, when they do a reservation through Camp Spa, will get 50% off this fall. And then we, you know, highlighted the $400 fall special we have uh, for hunting, you know, use the promo code HUNTING. So it's going to be interesting to see with those promo codes and with the wide distribution on this, if we get any, you know, return on that, you know, what kind of interest that generates. But I, I like the ad here. You know, we broke a little bit with some of our past look in terms of print advertising we've done with River Travel. But I think, you know, that really... And this is, by the way, you know, making the first, um, you know, printed use of some of that photography that we've been growing, you know, over the last year. Um, you know, so those are all pictures from last fall, but I think that really, I think that'll really get a lot of attention. It's going to be on page two of that newspaper, so when you pick it up and you open it up, you know, your thumb's going to be right here when you look at it, so... So that's one thing that we're doing with the, you know, fall tourism campaign stuff. Um, and then I did mention that, you know, I went to county board this month. And I'll just, I don't, I'm not going to give the full presentation. Oops. Oh, get out of that. i got to get back to my Zoom here. Screen sharing. Technology, got to love it. I'll stop that sharing for a second here. There's the one I want to share. Make up a leg. So here's the uh, here's the tourism or the pr presentation I put together for county board. You know, again, I tried to highlight that photography too. Um, you know that we've been doing, but noted, and you've you've seen all these numbers before, so I'm not going to go through them. Um, you know, the 40 million direct spending, 67 total economic development impact. Um, from 2019 to 22, our visitor spending was up 20.4 percent, in you know, and that was the second best overall performance during that period. And the, and the reason that that period is significant is just because you know that included the COVID years, and shows that we were very strong and resilient. Um, you know, a lot of places still haven't recovered from the pre-COVID, you know, or to the pre-COVID numbers. Uh, visitor spending supports 415 jobs, a total of $9.4 million in total labor income in Tremplow County, and generates $3.4 million in combined state and local tax collections. And then this is where, I, you know, getting to what Buzz was talking about, you know, try to further break that down and you know what does that, you know, what does that generate? And it's actually three hundred thirty-five thousand dollars worth of county tax collections that you can trace back to um, visitor spending. So I applied that sixty-seven million overall economic impact times that point zero zero five tax rate, and that three thirty-five was actually a thirty-five thousand dollar increase over just the year before. So it's it's got some pretty significant, you know, impact. Um, you know, in terms of the, in terms of the total, you know, county tax collection of 2.68 million, and this is the county sales tax. I should note, um, you know, 12 and a half percent or one eighth of that t t tax collection is directly traceable back to the visitor spending. Dave, do you know how are we doing in 23 comparatively so far? Oh yeah, I I had looked at the numbers. It it actually looks through the first you know, six, seven months of the year, like we were tracking ahead of last year's numbers for county sales tax collection, I assume you're asking, right? Or yeah, tourism they, in general, like yeah, I don't know what numbers, numbers you all look at. The tourism numbers, you know, we don't get monthly stuff. The Department of Tourism contracts with this firm that, you know, crunches the numbers and stuff like that, and they release that every June or so. Okay. Um, which is good because it comes out like at the beginning of our budget discussion sure. cycle. Okay. Um, but the Department of Revenue lists every month, 
you know, what the county sales tax collections are. I think I was noting in some of the county um, information that our actual sales taxes are down in general for this for this year. So that's. Well, I, I think when, when we talk about it in our county board meetings, we've been talking for us. It feels like I'd have to go back and just pull it up every day. But when I was putting this presentation together, I did look <clears throat> at the 23 numbers and you know, they're up and down every month, you know, sure. depending on stuff. Um, but overall, it looked like we were on pace or even okay. running a little ahead of last year. Okay, great. Um, and then I just noted that, you know, what we've got the last couple of years was 14000 a year in marketing. Um, last year, we had that additional 19000 in the ARPA COVID funds to do destination marketing. We don't have that this year. So I've been trying to run a program with 14000 that tries to do as much as we could last year with, you know, 33,000. I did note that our request for next year is 20,000, but the last takeaway there, Buzz, was that, you know, the board may want to consider linking the marketing budget in the future to increases in sales tax increase and our visitor spending. So that was that. And, of course, there's always other stuff going on, but... Uh, I'll just end my report there. I'm not going anywhere, so you don't have to worry about that. We told Good. you that too. You know, you know <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? No, thank you for all your hard work. Uh, no problem. This is Doreen again. Hey, this is I do Jean, where are you at with that, the visitor guide? Speak up, Jean. We didn't hear you. Um, said, where are we at with the visitor guide? So it's uh, so one one thing I need to tackle, Gene, and really hadn't thought about this thought this through before. You know, when we were having that discussion about visitors guide, but I had it pointed out by River Travel Media. You know, and I think they're they've got some good expertise in this, which is we probably before we start, you know, doing a visitors guide and getting too f far down the road with you know some other you know, print advertising is we need to probably engage a graphic designer or somebody that's in, you know, does branding stuff to come up with some consistent look so that we don't have multiple looks across different platforms out there. So it's, um, I'm still working towards the visitor's guide, but there's going to need to be a little detour here and I'm going to need to bring somebody on board to work with, you know, how do we convert that Traverse Trempolo County, you know, slogan and brand into, you know, visual look that we can incorporate into that stuff. Are print guides still popular? Because well, it seems like so much stuff is on digital. Yeah, so that's that's the other thing is, yes, there, there are still some visitor's guides. So La Crosse, Winona, obviously Great River Road does them. Visit Eau Claire got away from a printed visitor's guide a few years ago, and now they just do exclusively through their website. You know, they use their website as their sole thing. Other places will print visitor's guides, but they'll also make a PDF of it that's really, you know, app mobile app friendly, and they'll use that. So, um, you know, it's just a little bit more to consider. Um, I know we. I know I want to get rid of the visitor brochures that we've got now. Um, they're doing the basic job, but I feel like if we're going to go printed, we can do something better than that. I'm not a hundred percent convinced that a, a you know a printed visitor's guide is is our best alternative. But either way, we need to you know either way we need to get this you know, thing of our brand and image, imagery and stuff like that settled. Okay. And I've got a little bit of money left in the budget for this year, um, and we'll be looking to try to bring somebody on board to work you, with that. Okay. I think even if we went away from the printed guide, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I, I think people still like to have something in hand at times. Correct. And if nothing else, a QR code that they could scan yeah. to get to more information would be a good way to go, potentially. Yeah, 
And, you know, the thing is if we, you know, because we talked about this a couple months ago and, you know, the, I'm, I'm aware that the committee voted to go forward with doing a sponsor-supported visitor's guide. Um, and if we do a, if we do a print a visitor's guide, it's got to be sponsor-supported because the costs for printing run up quickly. Mm -hmm. um, on, on the alternative, if we didn't do a printed visitor's guide, if we did you know, something a little simpler. Like a brochure with a QR code. Like a perhaps. brochure with a QR code that goes to a full-blown visitor's guide. It wouldn't necessarily have to be sponsor-supported. So um, kind of trying to look at some of those options and see what we can do. Okay. The other thing I will note at, at, that I forgot to mention is um, I did get on to the State Fair uh, in August and was at the Visit Wisconsin booth. And um, we were there on Monday, you know, Tuesday, August 8th. And I probably handed out 600, 700 brochures. Nice. And talked up Trempolo County, especially for fall visiting. For our visitor guide or whatever we determined to go with and through the branding process and all of that, I think that one thing we do need to be sure of is that we are including a lot of diversity in our photography because what I'm seeing isn't very diverse so far for um, different ethnicities and things like that to be able to you know encourage them to come to yep and we have a diverse population in Trumpwell County right um, what Dave, do you know who's going to be doing the fall color reporting um, I I was I was assuming I was going to be doing some of that, although I think, uh, Jeannie, have you done some of the northern county reporting in the past? I thought you did. Fall, call, fall color reporting for the tourism website? No, I would love to take credit for it, but <laughs> yeah, Jean, yeah, or Jean, I was going to... Were you talking to me or were you talking to the other Jean? No, I was talking to you, oh. Jeannie. Jeannie. Because I thought, because last year I kind of remember somebody reporting from northern Trempolo County, and I don't know who it was. I assumed it was you. Um, but, Jean, yes, I will been, be. It does a lot of stuff. Was it her? Was it Nikki from Strong? Did you remember? I'm not sure. Okay. I will check done into that, in Jean. Past, so, yeah, Linda Mossman has always done it, and I was wondering if she and you had had any contact. Because aren't you working together for the uh, Whitehall yeah. Um, 150th celebration. Yeah, I'll I'll check in with Linda. Um, but I I have access to that too through my Travel Wisconsin. Yeah. Login. So I'll see. I'll, I'll I'll check with them to see who's reported in the past, and you know, see if we want to. Yeah. See if we want to consolidate that. It, they're starting to I turn a little bit. I know she's got a lot of. Um, yeah, I know she's got a lot of things. Um, family-wise, health-wise going on. So I don't know if um, she contacted them and was going to do it or not. I was going to email, find yep. out. Yeah, I'll does, check in with does her. Does anybody know how many applicants? Yeah, how many applicants we have thus far for the Parks and Rec coordinator or now things are kind of um, going to be on hold in regards to Reed um, leaving? The position closes, I believe, September 20th. So we'll find out how many yeah. applications we have at that time. Okay. And then the conservation specialist will be open, obviously, because Reed is gone. And by the way, Reed, thank you for everything. I've enjoyed working with you. Thank you, Jean. Appreciate that. The conservation specialist position is currently posted oh, and will close September 24th, I believe. Okay, so both positions are posted yeah. and we'll see what happens. Any other questions That's or discussions on, for Mr. Carlson? The advertisement that going into that tra uh, tourism guide, could that be posted on the website for Petrick Park? So sure. people can see it. I, it's a very nice ad, um, and I think that might even enhance if word gets out saying, hey, they got 50% off, or there's a fall seasonal uh, package. It might increase some of the camping there. 
or even if it was posted in some of the local newspapers. Well, I was even thinking just put one even at Petrick Park so when people like this past weekend would have seen it when they went to the bathroom. But. Yeah, we can. Um, th 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 those are all good suggestions. I so that that promo code that we put in that ad. I if we were going to reproduce that, like for instance in the Trumpelow County Times, I'd probably rework that ad <clears throat> and have a different promo code so that. And this is just I'm, I get it, but it, we so we know where it's coming from. Yeah. Any other questions? Discussion? Okay. Um, number 14, future agenda items. Anybody have anything? So we've set on this time, first Tuesday of the month, 830. Is that good for everybody? So far so good? Okay. Be at the October meeting. That's our next meeting, October? October, yeah. <laughs> oh, It is September. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And I just, the, the weather just popped up on my, it's going to be like 95 today, but Thursday the high is 66. You got to love Wisconsin, don't you? Okay, everybody, thank you for coming. I appreciate everybody's input. And I don't know how I'm going to live without you, Reed. Um, I motion, uh, we will adjourn the meeting at 9.54 a.m.